Hi, welcome to the Online Jewelry Academy. I'm Professor John R. and I'm your instructor. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make jewelry with just one step. But seriously, we're going to talk about hammers, specifically which hammer you would use for certain operations. Now, you would seldom see a hammer like this one used in a jewelry studio, but at the end of this video, I'll tell you what it's used for. The most commonly used hammer on a jeweler's bench is the goldsmith's hammer. This is a type of cross peen hammer. It has a polished face, which is perfect for planishing, and it has a back end that's straight and rounded and highly polished for stretching metal. This is a workhorse of the jewelry studio because it can help you perform a wide variety of tasks. The one thing that you can't use it for, however, is you can't use it to strike another tool. It can only hit your project. This is because you would destroy the work that it took to refine the hammer's polished surface. And we have a video on that. It's entitled, Refine New Jewelry Hammers to Optimize Results. One of the best things about goldsmiths or cross peen hammers is that it's the only hammer that allows you to control the direction in which you stretch your forging project. Unlike other hammers that stretch metal in all directions with each hammer blow, a cross peen hammer allows you to move the metal along one axis. Now imagine that you had a roll of cookie dough on top of your bench and you were using the edge of your hand to strike it repeatedly. The roll of dough would lengthen, it wouldn't turn into a pancake. Now examples of this can be found on our website under the Forged Wire Jewelry Project section and in metal forming projects. Those are the category titles featured on the Online Jewelry Academy website. By the way, this hammer can be used to create some very attractive textures and I've demonstrated this in our video entitled Easy Cute Hammer Texture Drop Earrings Made from Copper Washers. The next hammer I want to talk about is a ball peen hammer. This hammer has a flat face on one end and a rounded end on the other side. The face is, that's flat is generally used to strike tools such as stamps and center punches. The rounded end of the hammer is most commonly used to create hammered textures on sheet metal, but the rounded end can also be used for metal forming. Now, there are a lot of hammers that won't leave a mark on your work. The one that is most commonly used in most jewelry studios is a rawhide mallet. Like the name implies, this hammer is made from leather. We showed you how to use this hammer in our video entitled, Form a Perfect Cuff Bracelet Using Your Bat Mandrel. Now, if you misplaced your bat mandrel, I suggest you look in your bat cave. Another situation where you may not want to leave a mark is when you're performing anticlastic raising. The perfect hammer choice for this is the Delrin Wedge Shape Mallet. Now, I demonstrated how to use this in our video entitled Simple to Make Water-Inspired Anticlastic Bracelet. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope it helped you to better understand which hammers to use and when. Now, I promised at the start of this video that I would tell you how to use Big Orange. This is a plastic covered dead blow mallet. It's most often used on construction sites to nudge wood and metal framing elements into place. But you can use this type of hammer in conjunction with your anvil to quickly flatten an annealed piece of sheet metal. If you check the description below, you'll find links to purchase comparable hammers to the ones I've shown you in this video. You'll also find discount codes to our Udemy classes. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the Online Jewelry Academy channel. Thanks for watching.